Hello all, I am back, third week in a row. I'm so excited and proud of myself. Um, my name is Sarah, coming to you from Northeast Ohio. I live just east of Cleveland, and um, I'm coming back to you today with some updates. I have a finished object, some good progress on my whips, um, and uh, that might be it. I guess a little bit of update TV reading watching situation um, so let's just get into it uh, first up is my finished object this is something that I had uh, not mentioned in the last few videos I started it in the middle of January and it is the clean and simple or simple and clean I can never remember which way it goes um, free pattern by Pearl Soho it is a baby size uh, dress, I guess you would say. So um, I'm making it for um, somebody at work for their daughter. And I finished it off today because I wanted to give it to him tomorrow. <laughs> so um, this is, this is the girl. This is the dress. I used um, Knit Picks Heatherly Sport yarn in the colorway Sweet Bing. And I did the size six to 12 months. Um, it's really cute. It's just got this nice little detailed linen stitch on the top and then again down here at the bottom um, and then just stocking it for the bottom body part. And then there are three buttonholes in the back that I just put on these clear little rounded guys. Uh, they're three eight, three eight inch buttons. Um, I forgot how much I love doing a linen stitch. There's just something so clean and classy about it. So I was super excited to do that again. I've never done buttonholes either. So that was a nice little um, learning experience. Just obviously something very small and simple. Three little baby buttons. So that was really cool to learn that as well. And then um, I don't know. I feel like it's just really wide and frumpy. But I also feel like babies are wide and frumpy and it's been so, so long since my kids were this size. Um, I often forget babies, like the sizing of them. So I follow the pattern. I hope it works. If it doesn't, I'm going to be thoroughly embarrassed. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It took just over one um, hank of the sweet bing, the sport weight yarn. So it ended up measuring out at 109 grams. So literally just, just over. So I'm pretty proud of it. I'm just excited. It would have been a much quicker knit than what uh, I did. But I, I talked about it in the, at the end of my last episode that I was so close to the finishing. And I just, so I just like stopped. Part of it was as I got excited about starting other projects. And then part of it is just this like fear of finishing something and then it being wrong or bad or whatever it I talk, I I like complained about it in my last episode but I did it and I finished it because it was ridiculous not to I I literally when I picked it back up I th thought I had more to do on it but I honestly only had the armhole and the neckline details and then sewing on the buttons so I I felt like just the biggest idiot for for even putting it down and not just seeing it through so hopefully um, he likes it and hopefully it fits his daughter and, um, I'm excited about it. I've already started like, um, going on Pinterest and, and, and um, like saving other baby knits, uh, in case this does work out because baby knits are just really quick and it's so satisfying to see like the little, the little bits work up. I, um, side note, I always look for patterns I most of the time look for patterns on Pinterest first before looking on Ravelry. I just feel like it's easier to search for things on Pinterest. I don't know if that's really true or not, but I don't know. So I just have like a bunch of stuff saved on Pinterest. And then when I'm ready to make it, I find the pattern on Ravelry. I don't know. It's not right or wrong. I just, that's just what I do. And then, um, oh, whip updates. I do feel, again, like I've been knitting a lot, but have not made a ton of progress, but I, I have decided it is just because, um, I have like several whips going right now. So let me, um, yes, let's start with my sock. This is just, again, 
a basic vanilla sock. I'm making it for myself. I'm using Sock Ease by Lion Brand in the colorway Aviation. And I, I'm, I, I'm love, 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 loving how this is turning out. So this stitch marker is where I was last week. So, I mean, that's a good little chunk. Um, I am just knitting these um, in a tube and then I will do an afterthought heel. I think that, because I'm trying to use like as much as I can of this. So I'm not really sure how far I'm knitting on this. I think what I'm going to do is just knit this until it's 40... Five, is that cutting it too close? 40 grams, maybe 45 grams. I'm not sure. Maybe 45 grams. And, um, and then I'll do the toe and then I'll do the second and then add the afterthought heel in either the same yarn if there's enough or I'll grab a contrasting heel and do that, do it in that. I might just, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But um, I just want to use as much as I can of this. And I, I, I love, love long socks. So I'm super good if it's, yeah, it will be long, which will be great. My socks for myself are normally about 72 to 80 grams for the pair, just depending on what pattern I'm doing and obviously the length. So I think if I do this to 40 before the toe and the cuff, or 45, I don't know. I'm going to have to measure it. Like, I think I'll weigh this and then see how much is actually left on this because I also am unfortunately very particular about my socks matching. So I will have to, you know, most likely wind some of this off to start it in the same spot. Um, I wish I didn't care about it, but I, I do. I'm pretty pretty particular about it. So i um, just going to embrace who I am. I know that's how it will be. So I'm just going to be careful. But I do need to weigh these. They're nowhere near ready, but I do need to figure out like how much more I need to go. <gasps> Maybe I'll weigh them and then just wind off and ball up what I need left for this. That would make more sense. That way I don't have to keep measuring this. That's such a good idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that maybe today. So I'll measure and then I'll wind, I'll pull off the rest from here to get the weight I need and then ball it up. That'll be good. And then I can figure out where, like how much more I need to wind off from this too before I get to, yeah. Okay. I know what I'm saying. I don't know if it's clear, but I know what I'm saying. Okay, good. There's a plan. <laughs> There's a plan for these. And then, um, yeah, these are just more um, my on-the-go if I'm in the car with my husband running errands, sitting at karate, waiting in line type thing. I actually just leave this whole thing just like in my purse. It's not even in like a knitting bag. It's just in a pocket of my purse. So I I always have it with me. And then, but I'm, I, well, I'm going to talk about something else I'm starting in a minute. Um, next up my gray space sweater. I'm super excited at the progress I've been making with this as well. I'm actually, um, at the point now to split for sleeves. So I was in the middle of go, go, going, and then I had to stop because I didn't have my barber cords to like hold the sleeves on. So, um, but I, I mean, I do now they were just like in my craft room and this was not in my craft room. Um, I'm not sure which is the front or the back right now, <laughs> but anyway, um, gray space is a, um, funnel neck sweater by Tiff Nealon. It's in, is it worsted weight? Well, yeah, worsted weight. I'm using, let me pull my other one out too, so I can do this properly. I'm using wool of the Andes. I'm using, <clears throat> sorry, so sorry. I'm using marble heather, which is just a nice, great, uh, it's, it's a little darker than what it's coming off, but, um, war, uh, marble heather and then a dove heather for the contrast. I know it's not like super different, but, um, again, I've said this a million times, color scares me, even though I am pushing myself to like do some things with color, but I did really want just like a basic gray. Well, this is not a basic pattern, but like a gray sweater. 
and it was my first time it's my first time doing color work and it's I'm so glad it's a very simple color work you're only using like one strand at a time so um I was worried that it wouldn't be a great contrast but I also decided if it's low contrast like that's okay I'm really just like I just want to get the practice of of color work anyway without further ado um, this is where I am at. So I am splitting for sleeves. This, my mushroom guy, which is on backwards. Sweet little guy. I don't know if he'll focus. Um, this is where I was last week in my last video. And then the color work section, I'm actually really excited about. I, I do think it'll, I do think that you can see it pretty. I, I think it'll, I think it'll be nice. I think it will turn out nicer than I thought it would. Um, so yeah, so I'm ready to split for sleeves. I have the yoke done. It's a circular sweater, um, on like big honker needles, which is great. Uh, my hands have been okay. My hands hurt when I use larger needles, but these ones have been okay. The top yoke was, um, and the neck were done in 10 and a half, US 10 and a half. And then, which is what, seven... 7.5 millimeter. I don't know. I should know that conversion, but I don't. And then the body is done. Oh no, I lost stitches. One moment. One moment, please. I hate when I do that. I also don't have needle stoppers that go on such big needles. So I'm just not very careful. And my, of course, my, my cable that I'm using is pretty small. Oh wait, I have the 10 and a half right here attached. Oh, I forgot. Oh my gosh, I was so wrong. This is a, is that right? A US 9? I guess it is. So the neck and the top circular yoke are in a US 9, five and a half. My bad. And then you switch to, for the body, to a US 11, eight millimeter. Why would there be such a big jump? Oh, I know why. The top, the top neck and um, circular yoke are, I don't want to say too much, I guess, are in a pattern and then the body is in a stockinette. So I must need that bigger needle to create the stockinette. But anyway, so this is the uh, funnel neck and then that bump right there is like, you know, the beginning of your yoke. So I'm excited about it. I feel like <clears throat> working on like US 11s for the majority of the body, it sh should really like fly, I hope. And then, um, the sleeves are nice too because at the cuff, it you pick up a little bit more of the color. You pick up the same color work pattern, um, just these little like lines right here. You pick those up, it, I think, again, and then finish knitting the cuff in the um, in the dark color. So it's nice. There's just like a little extra detail um, at the end of the cuffs, which I I thought was nice. You know, it elevates it a bit, as they say. So that's been a really great pattern now that I've gotten that going again properly. Um, I had issues in the beginning. They were my issues, not, not pattern issues. So I'm super excited how that's going. And then the only other thing that I've been working on, of course, besides my temperature blanket, I'm not going to show that all the time, is, um, is the Mega Mini Scarf that I'm using. Um, Urinaceous Fibers had a Valentine's Day. I'm just going to call it an advent because I don't know what else to call it. Um, advent, uh, February 1st through the 14th, you have to open a, a little mini skein. And um, so I'm still working on that. It's taking me way longer than I thought it would. I'm currently on color or day one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm currently on February 7th. So, so day seven of it. And um, again, the mega mini is a free pattern on Ravelry, but Ravelry by Julianne Amos, I believe it is. And this is where I'm at. So this little cat guy is where I was the last time. So I added one whole color and then half. And I'm almost halfway through this pretty pink. I really wish this Delino would come across better. It's so, so beautiful and glittery. So that's all that. You have seen the bottom already several times. Um, I love it. It's going to be perfect. I think it should end up being like the perfect length. I think for just like a nice little scarf. So, cause like this is where I would wear it. And then I'm on day seven. So I figure I have, you know, literally like 
half more to go. So it should, it should work out really good. And I'm just, I'm excited to have it done. It's fingering weight. So it's taking me forever, but it is just, um, garter stitch, which, so that's great. You don't have to th really think about it except for your one row that creates the diagonal, but I like it a lot. Um, I would, could totally definitely see using this pattern again for either minis or, or whatever. Um, and I love that it's free. How wonderful is that? So definitely recommend that pattern. I'm seriously debating getting and buying an advent this year for Christmas time. Um, I never have before. I don't like surprises, which is why I canceled all of my subscriptions to all of my monthly things last year, because I just like to be able to pick my yarn out myself, which I immediately contradicted myself because I signed up this year, which I said I wasn't buying any more yarn. I signed up for um, the, oh, what's that box that Kay the Crazy Sock Lady gets every month, the Yarnable. I got an email that they had spots open and I just had a moment of weakness and signed up for that again. Uh, I'm, I got right, I'm just so frustrated with myself. I got right back into the pattern that I was trying to get out of last year of not buying yarn. I have so much and I have so many projects that I want to knit that it just doesn't make sense to keep bringing in more yarn. It just, it just doesn't. But here I am doing it and it's so, uh, I really need to like, rethink my yarn life. So I re-signed up for that. I re-signed up for the Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad because I got enticed by um, Nicole from the Pine Cottage. Is that her podcast? Um, because she was talking about it in December that this colorway this year seemed, the colorways seemed just really like earthy and natural and, you know, and that's like I like, I love that too. And all of my sock yarns that I've been buying have been super bright. So I just thought it'd be nice to have more like down to earth, neutrally kind of colors. So I re-signed up for that. I got last month's, which was, or I got February's and, um, I don't know. I'm, I don't want to say I'm disappointed because you, that's not, I just, I'm, I wasn't like, <gasps> and then I think I just need to stay off social media and stop watching YouTube videos because then literally like over the weekend maybe or something, I was catching up on Kay the Crazy Sock Lady and she is doing Freckled Whimsy's Christmassy yarn subscription and I like have loved every one that she's made. So then I signed up for that. I'm like really headed the wrong way again with my yarn buying this year. And I... It, I don't know. It's like they're like panic buys or like FOMO or something. And I get so easily influenced and it's so frustrating and I need to figure out how to, how to combat that. So I'm signed up for that. I don't know if I'm getting it in March or April. I didn't pay attention to how her like payments with shipping go for that monthly subscription. But I also figured I do really, really love Christmas and I don't have but one pair of Christmas socks. So it would be kind of nice to have those. And they're all stripes, which I love self-striping yarn so, so much. So I don't know what I'm doing again. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Sorry for that. That little ramble. Oh, but before I talk about my next project, do you guys see my wall of storage is done? And I'm so, I could not be happier. We, um, it was a complete nightmare to get these two that you see on the end with the doors. It was a total nightmare to get them from Target. Like, nightmare. I was so frustrated, but I knew that I wanted to stay with the same collection because, again, I'm very particular about things being the same. So these are all from the same, I think it's the Carson collection from Target. That might be wrong, but um, so I had ordered... Okay, so originally I bought the two open bookcases from Target, from like my local Target. My husband and I went and got them. They only had two available. So I wanted to put them together and make sure that I would like them before deciding on the rest of, of the wall. Well, I put the one together. It was amazing. I knew I was going to love them. So I was putting the second one together and I should have known, but I had faith in people and faith in Target. 
the, the box was a little bit damaged. Um, it had somebody's like house, like shipping label on it. But like, why do you guys not take your shipping labels off before you return something into the store? Like Cynthia, I don't need to know you live like right around the corner from me. I don't know. It's just weird. Like why do people leave that information on boxes that are going back to the store? Anyway, I'm going to take it out. I'm unpacking all the pieces and lo and behold, one of the pieces is broken. I was so frustrated. So I was complaining to my husband about it and he's always so amazing. He called the company for me to find out if they could just send a replacement of the piece. And they finally got back to him and they were like, no, you have to return it to the store. So then I have to put all this stuff back in this huge box. It's very heavy. And we tape it back up. We drag it to the store. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. They told me I had to return it. And of course, the lady at the return desk, I feel like we're basically best friends because of how much stuff I buy and then have to return. She was like, oh, it's fine. And then I was like, please don't sell this to somebody. It's literally broken. And I kept the broken piece out of the box so she could see it. Not that she wouldn't believe me, but whatever. So I take it back. So I'm like, this is annoying. They, they still don't have any more in stock because I had just purchased the last two like recently. So I was like, okay, well, I have to just go online and get them. So I went online to buy three because I knew I, I knew four would fit. And that's when I discovered, I hope I didn't say all this already. That's when I discovered the same, not brand. What's it called again? I just said it. The car, the collection, same collection, but with doors. So I was like, oh, the door ones aren't that much more expensive and it would be nice to have hidden storage. So I was like, I'm just going to do it because I think it'll look really nice. So I bought two of the door ones and then one more open bookcase one. Now, there was a slight dilemma because they had two door ones at my local Target that I could have just gone to pick up. But I was like, but if I already have to buy the open bookcase one, I'll just buy them all together. They'll just get shipped all together. Then I don't have to worry about it because like they're hard and they really barely fit in our vehicles. So I was like, I'll just have the delivery guy do all my work for me. That's fine. So I purchased one more open and then the two, two ones with the doors and they ended up shipping from different places anyway. I don't know why I thought there was just like one master warehouse that Target had that they would all be coming from. So then I was like already kicking myself because I could have by that time already had the ones with the doors from my local Target. Whatever. So um, the open bookcase one ended up coming by surprise because I completely missed the notification that it was being shipped and sent and delivered. So that was super exciting. I put it together and then I was like, well, that's weird. Where are my other ones because Target, if you're like a member or whatever, you get the two day shipping. And I was like, these should have totally been here. In my last video, I had said that they were getting delivered the next day, Valentine's Day. So they were supposed to be here last Wednesday. Well, then I kept like kind of stalkerishly checking the tracking and it just kept saying like FedEx shipping label created. Like February 14th, it still said that. February 15th, it still said that. February 16th, it still said that. I was like, something's wrong. Like Target usually has their crap together. What's going on? So I was whining and complaining to my husband about it on Saturday, just this past Saturday. And he was like, well, did you call? And I was like, no, I hate talking to people. Like, why would I call? So he's like, well, you need to call. And I was like, but they have them available at this like other Target that's not super local to us. So I'm just going to go get them there. And he's like, but you should call and find out where your bookcases are that you already bought. Obviously he was right. And I was just being dramatic and a baby because I really just can't stand calling customer service places. So I called and I spoke to somebody wherever they were located. I don't know, but he was lovely. And he was like, I actually don't know where they are either. Perhaps the boxes were damaged and FedEx never picked them up. And I was like, then why didn't anybody tell me? And he's just like, that's a good question. I don't know. So he ended up, he was like, I can either refund you the money or we can replace them. And I was like, can you just refund me the money? And he was like, yeah, he was lovely, amazing, very quick conversation. I shouldn't have been putting it off for so long. So then I ended up purchasing the ones from my not local 
uh, Target and I did a store pickup so that I could make sure that they were actually like still there in the store and available for purchase before I drove all the way out there. So got the notification, was super excited, but still like, oh my gosh, something could happen. What if they're not really both there? Blah, blah, blah. We got out there. It's not that far. It's like 25 minutes from our house. My husband was lovely enough to offer to go with me, which is great because I kind of needed his help loading them into our vehicle anyway. So we get there. The one box is like kind of a little damaged and it had somebody's shipping label on it. Again, like what is, is this just like me that I like rip off shipping labels? I don't know. So then I was like, oh my gosh, is this going to be the same nightmare again? So while we were there, while the guy bringing them out to our car for us was still there. I literally ripped the box back so that I could check the styrofoam, check the pieces around it to make sure that nothing was broken because I was not going to go through this again. Get it home, put them together. Everything is great. I'm super excited. I will say though, if you're at, at all like interested in this collection, they are very sturdy. They appear very sturdy. They were so easy to put together, but the two book the two with the doors were like not packaged as well for some reason and do have some pretty apparent scrapes on them um like where the paint is chipped off and things like that I at this point don't care I will just cover them with some white paint at some point um so that was pretty frustrating though because again they're not inexpensive um so that was annoying and then also you cannot really tell but um I can because uh, again I'm very particular about things this one over here behind my right side um the fr and this isn't going to make any sense because I'm not and I'm not going to take pictures to put up here but the um framing on the door like the outside decorative framing they're on the one door at the bottom they just didn't like run a strip of like white so it look so you can see that it's separated which they all are but the other ones are have like white painted over it but you can see like the bare wood in it because they didn't run a white strip so that really bothers me and my husband's like you're being ridiculous and I was like I don't I don't actually care because I bought them and this has taken me like a million years to even like put this room together so that's frustrating again not returning it maybe I'll write to Target I'll say I'll write to Target I probably never will because I do that a lot too where I'm going to complain to somebody and then I don't and then on this one over here the doors don't line up um like I have to make sure that I'm closing them both together to push them in so eventually they will get scraped um I am going to have um my husband like look at it to see if he can do something and if not then not but overall I'm so so glad I made the investment um I think that my wall it just looks it just makes me so happy um and I'm just so glad I still am in the process of, of organizing it because then of course you're like you have this new storage and you're like whoa well, what's the best way to organize it I don't really know so right now I kind of just have it organized by projects by what they belong with because again every the majority of my yarn I would say I'm just looking around at it all I would say 90% of my yarn that I have right now has intended projects so I just kind of left everything chunked like that if that makes sense and then I have some fabric back there. I do still have some organizing to do. I still have a lot of yarn that I need to get up there and and go through to donate. So that's still like a pretty big project I have not felt like undertaking yet. But that's that. I'm just, it makes me so happy to like be in this space and see that in the background because it's, it, it was a labor, it was a labor of love for sure. Oh, anyway, sorry for that big tangent. And if you stuck through my Target story, thank you. <laughs> um, I just have one more thing I want to talk about. I, um, sorry if you can hear my dogs barking. Um, but anyway, I have a new sock project that I want to get started on pretty ASAP. I might even wind it up today. Um, I want to make my grandma a pair of socks. So I got, um, this is by Nanette Wake Studio, and I've gotten her yarn before, and I really, really love it. Um, it's just this beautiful, like, 
blues, pinks, yellows, um, oranges. It's really like all the colors. Some, this, like yellow in here is like highlighter yellow. It's so awesome. Um, pinks. My grandma is not necessarily like a super colorful person. Like she wears a lot of just basic colors, but they're socks and it's pretty, I think, I'm hoping that it's pretty speckly that it'll just, um, you know, it'll just kind of like speckle out. I, I really bought this yarn because the, the base of it is white. Um, so I'm hoping that she will really like it. So this is only a 50 gram, which is fine because I had always planned on making her shorties. And so what I'm going to do is wind this up so I have two even um, cakes. And then I will, I'm going to, I'll show you the pattern I'm going to use, but I'm just going to, I believe, do it for as long as it'll go. And then I will add a contrast for the toe and the heels. I am very well aware that I may have to use the color I'm doing for the toes. I may have to start that like earlier than, than the toe decreases with this, but she also has super small feet. She's like a size six, uh, US six. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this will, this will last. I'm kind of in my head thinking that I will be using the same amount of yarn that I use to make my eight year old socks because I make him tall socks. So I'm thinking it might work. Um, so anyway, so I'm doing, going to use that with, oh, I guess I can show you really, I don't, okay. So again, like I just said, my grandma is not like a bright color wearing person. So I already know that this is going to be, um, she will love them. I don't mean that, but I already know this is going to be a lot. So I'm debating between these two greens. I personally know that this dark green or the bright green will match a lot better, but I feel like I might do this darker green to tone them down. But then I'm also worried that this dark green might um, bleed when she washes these. Uh, so I have not decided what I'm doing with that yet. I might also very well just pick up, which I know I just said about buying more yarn, but I might just buy maybe like a white fingering to do for the heels and toes you know what, I might do that. Because I've also realized after watching a lot of Summer Lee, her podcast, and she's like just amazing. And even after watching like Kay the Crazy Sock Lady knit up so many socks, I realized that I don't have, um, I don't have a good stash of, of tonal sock yarn. Like I buy speckled, I buy variegated, I buy striped, but I just don't have basic colors to do heels and toes or and or cuffs with. Um, I do often buy sock sets that have a mini in it, but I still find that those are like a bit variegated. And really my bigger problem with that is, is I'm afraid to pull the mini out to, <laughs> to use if I'm not using it with that sock set, which is, I know, absurd. I probably don't need to buy a white. I'm, I could probably just break open a sock set and just deal with that. I'm just afraid to do it because I want those minis for those socks that I'm going to make. And that's so stupid. I'm just going to do that. Okay. So not doing either of these, although this green would look super, super awesome with it. Um, but I did buy, um, I, I loved this one so much that I did end up buying another one that's pretty similar. Um, actually, hold on. I have it right here. Um, because I don't have any shorties and I want to make a pair. So I got this, which I know is going to look almost exactly the same, but this is another Nanette Wake. This one's called Melt My Heart. So this was like part of her Valentine. So it's a little bit more pink and reds in it. So maybe, so I think what I'll do is I'll use this green for these for myself. Um, because my feet are bigger than hers. So I will need like all the bit of this that I can get. So that'll be, oh, I am, I'm just so excited about these socks. I forgot to tell you what they are. I am not going to be able to say this because it's like a French name, um, J-E-T-E -E with an apostrophe, with a asterisk over it. Can you even, it's not even focusing. It's J-E-T-E -E is the color name of, of these are my grandma's socks that I'm going to find a contrasting color for. I'm going to break open one of these socks 
bundles that I have. I'm going to do that because that's the right thing to do. Okay. So I am using, I've been dying since I got this book last week to find a pattern in here in Summer Lee's book, new book, The Sock Project to make. And um, I knew I wanted to make my grandma one because I did not want to make her uh, plain vanilla socks. She would love them, but I just wanted to do something a little fancier for her. She is not going to realize the difference of work or whatever that it takes. And, and uh, that's not what it's about either. I just, I personally just want to make her something just a little more elevated than a vanilla sock. So I'm doing the Luna sock um, pattern by Summerlee. And I love it. And it's going to be, it's, it's still fairly simple, just with like a nice little, it just uh, seems like from the quickness that I read through it, it's like just a series of different knits, pearls, and all that. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and I'm going to do those. And I really, really want to start them today. So I, I'm going to start them today. I'm going to get, I'm going to get my little ball winder out anyway. I'm going to split up this into 25 grams each. And then I'm going to, while I'm weighing it all out and everything anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to get this wound up better so that this is ready to go to and back in my purse so that I take all the guesswork out of that. So I think that's a good plan. Uh, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to get my little dress wrapped up in a little gift bag to take into work tomorrow. Um, and that's all the yarny stuff today. I, I really did want to spend some time uh, in here getting more yarn up on there and organizing and things, but I think that uh, life stuff is probably going to take over um, and I, I might not have too much time for that today. Um, quick watching reading update. I'm still reading, what's it called? The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. Again, when it's like physically reading a book, whether it be on my Kindle or an actual book, it takes me so much longer to get through than an audio book because I just don't have the ability to read and knit very well. So I still have that going. I don't even know if I'm halfway through it. I really need, I need to I need to just spend some reading time and, and get that book done. Um, it's, it's good. It's fine. I want to see where it goes because there is, I'm in a spot where there's quite a bit of mystery. So, um, I have that. I was going to start a new audiobook, but I'm having issues with my library card and I have been putting off calling the library about it because that's what I do. So I have not been listening to anything. I've just been catching up on audio podcasts. Um, that I haven't listened to in a while. So that has been fine. And then watching, I finished the series Fool Me Once. Um, I loved it. It was amazing. I loved it. Highly recommend it. That is on Netflix. My husband and I have been trying to watch some shows together. We do watch Black Mirror. Um, that's on Netflix as well. That is slow going for us because the episodes are quite a bit longer. Um, so we are not always in the mood to watch like an hour-ish long show at the end of our day. So we're slowly making our way through that. And then I reminded him that we still need to finish Murders in the Building on Hulu. We're in the last season of that. I, I mean, we have to be more than halfway through the series. The problem is, for whatever reason, when we put that on, he like falls asleep. So obviously he's not even that interested in it. And I said, I said to him, I said, can I just finish this on my own? Cause like, I just, I just want to watch it. I just want to finish it. He's like, no, no, we'll watch it. But then he, the dude literally falls asleep. So anyway, that's what we're watching. I do not have anything personally that I'm watching right now. I need to start something. I've had some suggestions from some coworkers and things. So, um, I don't know. I'll find something to watch. But uh, that's all that. And then I did forget to mention I am actually wearing a knit today. It's socks, though, which is what I'm usually wearing. These are, I think I've shown these before. These, I can't even show them well. Let me just take it off really quick. These are Regia Perfect brand, um, which I am fully obsessed with. I They're balling on the heel. I wear them literally all the time. They are so warm and cozy and I'm, I'm obsessed with them. I just love that they completely match evenly. They set it up for you. They tell you when to stop the cuff. It has an extra long cuff, which I love. 
Um, if you have never used Regia Perfect, oh my gosh, you have to. I um, watched, of course, I got the the inspiration from Kay the Crazy Sock Lady, um, and um, I, I love them. They are, they're probably my favorite socks they're they're warm they're like they're fingering weight but they're rustic so they're just I don't know I just love them so much and um I would want I want to make 5,000 more of them but I'm holding off I'm holding off right now um so yeah that's that's everything oh and then if you do you care? I had my whole whiny explosion about needing bifocals last week. I did pick them up. I do have them right here with me. Um, I was going to try to just wear them for the episode just because I'm, I'm still getting used to them. But, um, the, I have a ring light now because I have like a fancy new tripod and it was like reflecting so ridiculously that I, it was too distracting. So if you care at all, these are my bifocals. They're just, oh, they're, am I out of it? Okay. They're literally just gold framed. They're nothing fancy. Um, they do have like a little fun splash of red on the whatever this is called, the arm or whatever. They're fine. I don't care about them. I'm still angry that I need bifocals. And again, I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible when I when I had to pick them up. Um, I was super frustrated with the selection as well. I, I just go to my local lens crafters. I love the eye doctor there so much and I know that I can just go take my prescription to a million other places or order online but because they were um, my first time with bifocals and a progressive lens um, I wanted to be able to physically be able to like take them back to the store if I had any issues or or questions or anything like that so once I get used to them it's incredibly possible that I will purchase more glasses um, online I like huge framed glasses like huge and they just didn't have anything they just didn't have anything big enough like I want like I like like I'm the girl with the big sunglasses and I wear um blue light glasses at work because I stare at a computer screen for most of the day and all of my frames are ginormous and huge so these are like pretty small for for me they're fine though they're fine they will serve its purpose um, I'm, I am excited to try knitting later and watching TV. That's where I've noticed, um, a big change with my vision is like having knitting and then having issues focusing on the TV. Like when I look up and then knitting again, and I've been getting like headaches when I knit for a long period of time too. So I'm hoping that these glasses will solve that. But, um, anyway, I have no idea what just happened to this episode. I don't even know if I've ever recorded an episode this long. If you have made it this far, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I am going to wrap it up. I am hungry. I'm going to go make some lunch. I really, really, really hope that you guys have a great day. Um, I hope that you found some kind of joy or humor in this video. Um, please like, subscribe, all those things that people have to say. Um, otherwise, I, I really hope to see you next week, and I hope you have a great day.